Threads or actors can communicate with one another by sending a message that contains data. The Rust standard library contains an implementation of channels. A channel is a concept where one thread sends data to another. My name is Ricky and welcome to the dev method. So if you guys like what you see, go ahead and give this a like or subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Last episode, we looked at threads and we simply spawned them and then we just printed out some stuff on that thread. Now we're going to take it a step further and we're actually going to send data from one thread to the other. And we do this with something called the channel. So think of it this way. If you have a thread one that has some sort of data in it and it wants to send that data to another thread, there's a, a communication channel that has been opened up. And you can think of this as maybe like water that is flowing in a river downstream uh, to another thread. And that water is containing data. So the message that you send contains numbers, objects. I don't know what it is, but it, it just has it and it's going to send it to you. So let's take a look at our first example. So we break this example down into three chunks here. So we first have our use of the standard library's uh, sync module. And then we're, within the sync module, we have this MPSC. And uh, essentially that stands for a multi-producer, single consumer FIFO queue that communicates. So in this case, we're just going to be using numbers um, or strings. So line seven, it actually returns a tuple when we use uh, this channel constructor or creator. It creates a transmitter and it also creates a receiver. So the transmitter um, is the thing that sends the data. And then the receiver is the thing that uh, grabs onto it and then gives it to that thread. So here we have it marked as TX and then RX. Um, and then if you take a look here on line 10 through 14, this is actually where we spawn that thread like we've done before. And we have a string. So there's some sort of data that's been, connect, uh, that's been created. And then we connect it by sending the data through that channel. So here's that transmitter. It's transmitting and sending a message. And that data ends up being this string. We'll talk about line 13 in a second. But then line 17 and 18, this is where we wait for the message to come through. And then when it is received, we unwrap it and we actually take a look at what's inside of it. And that will be the string value. And then we print that out on line 18. So that's a simple concept, but let's take a look closer at line 13. So line 13 here is showing the example of uh, borrowing rules and how the borrowing rules help us in this case. So if you can recall from way previous in the book, uh, val here, that value, when we give it to send, send is now taking ownership of that variable. So we don't use it again afterwards. That's why line 13 actually has an error. And so this error is saying that we're breaking the borrowing rules. So let's go ahead and run this and let's see what the output shows. Cargo run. Yeah, so here it is. So here's the move. It moves into uh, on line 12, the send, and then we're later trying to use it the value is trying to be borrowed after it's already been moved. So now let's update the example so that we can send multiple messages from one thread to the other. So here we still have line six. And let's break this down a little bit further. We don't know exactly what the values are going to be yet. Um, but uh, we know it's going to be a string because Rust is intelligent enough to look ahead and see the first usage of TX. So we have this as a move closure. So that means it's capturing TX. And now we're taking ownership of it in that closure. And we're able to use this not only does it just send one value, but multiple. And that's what we're doing here on line 17. So we're looping through all the vowels. So each one of these lines 10 through 13 here, each one of those strings are being looped through, and then we're going to send it. Uh, we also have this little like artificial timer thing here happening. So we just sleep for a moment on the thread, and then we go to the next iteration in the loop. Then at the end of this, we have line uh, 25, we're actually waiting around um, on the receiver. And this time, we're treating it like it's an iterator. And so uh, it's asynchronously waiting for all the messages to come through. And then it's printing them out. But then once we're done, then we go ahead and close everything up, drop all the values of the threads and the channels. Everything gets cleaned up uh, in between lines 27 and 28. And the reason why we know that the end of the iterator uh, happens here is because this this right here, that closure, so uh, right after line 19 and in between line 20 and 19, uh, that thread is cleaning itself up and it's saying, I'm done sending any more messages because I have no more code to run. So that's why 
this iterator part works here. And it's really cool because it looks like it works right in with just regular for loops, like looping through uh, a vector, let's say, or, or an array. So it's pretty cool to do this. Let's actually try it out, and let's see what it looks like on the command line. All right, so I do cargo run. So here's those artificial weights coming in a little bit at a time. So that's cool. Nice. Now, another thing about this is that you can actually have um, multiple transmitters for the one receiver. So this is actually pretty cool. Let's take a look at actually how to do that. So the really the only thing that we changed from before, uh, we still have this line six here where we create that channel. And we're still going to be sending strings. But this time we use on line nine, but this time we use on line nine a clone. So clone uh, is essentially uh, making sure that we have two transmitters now, and that's going to be stored in TX1. So we have TX and then TX1, and they're both pointing toward the same receiver. So any of the values that they do or that they that they uh, send, they're going to be sent to that single receiver. So here are lines 10 through 22. Uh, we'll have just TX1. And then we actually use the, just the regular TX um, uh, on the next thread that is starting here uh, on line 24. And then we actually do the send on line 33. So it looks almost like the exact same code. There's going to be different values, though, sent between the two. So let's go ahead and actually try this out and see what happens. We also have the uh, little sleep that we have in here so that we can see possibly different orders if we run this multiple times in a row. So let's give that a try. All right, so cargo run. All right, so let me open up another terminal right next to it. Let's just see if we can get a different output from before. Ah, yeah, so the first two reversed. We have high, and then we have more. Then we have from and messages, and we have the and for. Oh, but then thread actually comes out last for both. So if you take a look at those, how they're sent here. So yeah, thread came out last for both. The order of these will actually change. It really just depends on your operating system and a couple other factors on your system to send that thread after the sleep and how sleep actually works on that operating system. But without going into too much detail, I think the idea is clear. Uh, this is one of those examples that we've talked about from the last video where debugging is going to be really difficult with multiple threads. Now, this is not necessarily something we're aiming for to always try and get the same order. So, uh, you know, that's that's not what we're actually trying to get at here. We're just trying to send any message and we're just trying to see that there is going to be just whatever order it comes in. That's going to be how it comes out on the other end of the receiver. So if you like what you've seen, go ahead and hit the like button below. And if you want to see more, just hit subscribe. Also, leave a comment if you guys have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. All this content was from Chapter 16, Section 2 of the Rust Programming Book. Next time, we'll be going over Section 3 in Chapter 16. And that'll be talking about shared state concurrency. Have a good one.